Good morning. Uh, what a morning it is. Um, it's uh, a bit sticky, a little bit sticky here. Um, but we had a lovely weekend. I have to say Alfie had a lovely one and he's still got the paddling pool and the water slide and things up. So he'll still be enjoying it. And um, <clears throat> hopefully everybody's able to enjoy it. And then uh, I think 20s is more manageable though, 30s. Uh, you sort of want to be um, outside or have air conditioning. And I have to say, we haven't got that, so there you go. I've got it in the car, though, so I suppose that's a good reason for going in the car. What have we got coming up? Well, um, on Wednesday, we're playing our first effort at pairs. So I'm going to play basically with three other people. So it'll be a sort of head-to-head, -head and we will be comparing scores of other random tables. Um, so we will be in the casual part of the site so anybody who actually comes to the table bear that in mind we will not be in the normal we will be in the casual part of the site um, we may well be in the Accor club we'll see either the Accor or the Pogo but if you if you search for AJFM you will be able to find me so that's Wednesday at 7.30 we're going to be playing pairs rather than teams similar style you're going to watch me in the same way uh, it won't be a live pairs game, so it, it will just be, uh, I think most of you have probably played casual games where if you choose match points, you get compared against random tables. Um, and it's a bit, it would be nicer for you to see than point board. Those of you who've been watching have seen point board before, and that's a little bit more difficult. Okay, don't forget it. As always, you watch it on the website. You don't have to go online at all for it. You don't have to go on BBO. It's some people do. So, so please don't get confused. Just you will be logging on as normal as you do on a Wednesday. Okay, those of you who, who like to watch or watch later. Okay, it's exactly the same with the commentary. All exactly the same. Okay, but if someone wanted to come to the table, which I know some do, just remember it's in the casual. Well, please, anybody who doesn't, don't think you have to. Okay. All right. Um, and we're working on beginners and novices quite a lot. And I'll, uh, I've got a tip on that. And then we'll talk about, uh, you know, we'll talk about um, how we're going to develop that. We're going to have, hopefully, my begin software will be on the member site. So any member will be able to use it. And we are hoping then to sort of have a theme for the beginners uh, stroke novices throughout. And, and I'm hoping that that will, um, you know, that will be of interest to the beginners and novices. And um, it will allow them to play hands. And bear in mind that the beginner software has 20 odd chapters. So the last chapters there are very much for, you know, good novices. And they give you the chance to do practice hands and hopefully improve in that way. So... Um, and we will hopefully choose a theme and, and that will, I'm hoping, help you along. And those of you who've got beginners and uh, teaching them, they can, if you want, they can come on for a free month. We're going to give beginners a free month and see how they get on. Uh, so um, for, you can call the office with regard to that. On the site, we're still on end play, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we're going to be talking about using the bidding. Uh, bidding is annoying, but it can be useful as we'll see. Uh, on the site, uh, the set hands that on the next couple of weeks are going to be mixed set hands, what we call mixed set hands. So those are, those are hands that have come from the last 13 months. Okay, last 13 months. And of course on Fridays we are continuing our theme of forcing bids, moving on to game forcing bids. And uh, that's this particular hand evaluation hand, which some of you will have seen on Friday, <coughs> is on that theme. Theme, sorry. Um, and so here you've got a hand, and um, you know I want you to evaluate it as usual. Um, I will probably be taking in a fair bit of water today, uh, if that's all right. It's quite steamy in this office. Um, and what you're going to be asked here, in a way, is your partner's going to open the bidding and you're going to decide whether you want to make game-forcing bids or invitational bids. And there's a lot of values in bridge where you're borderline. Here you've got 12 points. In theory, a mediocre 12 and a mediocre 12 are clearly not going to be making game. So you'll have a decision to make. You've got to decide where your 12 sits. 
If it's closer to 13 points, clearly I think you should be going for game. If it's closer to 11, you don't. And that's important. Whenever I pick up 12 points, you know that with regard to weak no trump opening bids. Again, you're thinking the same. You're thinking, shall I, shan't I? And you've got to make that decision. So we'll come back that, to that after the seminar. Uh, I'm, I thought I'd mentioned the cruise of the week, and that's the one that I'm going on in May. I'm going to St. Petersburg next May. Looking forward to it. Obviously, it was scheduled uh, for this May, um, but but we're going to we're going to St. Petersburg in May for um, a nice stay over in St. Petersburg, and you can see the details of that on our website, BMB Holidays, which of course you can access from BMB as well. Um, there, that one goes from the north. Um, you can go to St. Petersburg from the south as well, I should say. Uh, that's a bit later in the year, in September, October time. Um, but we're going in May and it'll be my first cruise. Oh, and it's not. No, no, I've got the, um, I forgot, I've got the Northern Lights one, haven't I? I've got the Northern Lights cruise, but it'll be uh, a nice spring summer cruise. Last, the last May that Alfie will be able to come on board. So um, uh, we will see how that goes. Uh, after that, I might have to do... Um, July, August cruises, we will see. OK, uh, we're going to go to the PowerPoint, I think. So let me go over there. So with regard to the PowerPoint, um, let's have a look. We're talking end play. We're going to start exactly the same as we have the last few weeks, which is the definition of an end play. And what we're trying to do is leave a defender in a nasty position. And what I will tell you is that probably 75% of perfect end plays come because we know what's in the opponent's hand. Now that seems a bit crazy, but there will be times, and we're going to see today, and it's really important that you take advantage. I'm not saying it's easy, of course, but it's really important that you try to, and we'll see why. So the perfect end play forces a defender to give away a trick. And as I like to repeat every time I talk about this particular type of topic, even if you don't make a perfect end play, if you give the opponents the lead, you give them the chance to go wrong. And believe you me, it is worth doing that. However, what I want to talk about today and tomorrow is... the opponents being aggressive <clears throat> they bid against you okay they make your life really difficult sometimes you have to guess what the right contract should be but if they're making descriptive bids as well we've all had a preempt is a really descriptive bid a three heart opener really descriptive bid okay a two no trump overcall the unusual two no trumps as we're going to see a really descriptive bid they're really aggressive they get in our way but they do give us a lot of information. And during the play, if we plan carefully, we can take advantage of them. Okay. And it's important to do this because if you do do this, okay, then, of course, the annoyance of your opponent's bids become less annoying in a, li in a little way. So let's have a very simple... Well, sorry, again, must stop saying the word simple when it comes to things like input. Let's look at an example where the interference bid is very specific. It gets in our way. It makes East's bid very difficult. I mean, let's have a look at it. One spade, North is non-vulnerable against vulnerable, and he comes in with two no trumps, okay, which he alerts if he's, or his partner alerts live, and they both would have said that it's the unusual two no trumps. It shows at least Five, five in the minors. At least five, five in the minors. It's a great aggressive bid and will often allow them to find sacrifices or disturb our bidding, do all sorts of things. But if I know that North is five, five, it could come very, very handy when it comes to the play. It's made East's life very difficult. East has got nine points and nine losers, that dreaded 4-3-3-3 three, three, three shape. But I've got to be honest, he feels he's got to bid three spades. Okay, 
you know, some of you may have a way of showing all sorts of spade raises in this auction. We're playing simple bridge and East feels he has to bid three spades. It's not perfect. It's not perfect because, let's be honest, it's a pretty ugly hand and it's not really worth a raise to three spades, but you're competing. And the problem West has is he doesn't know. Well, with 18 points, he's going to go for game anyway. Okay, I know there's six losers, but you've got three aces and two kings, so you are a lot better than six losers. It's important to remember that. If I change the ace of clubs and the ace of spades into two queens there, you'd have the same number of losers. So if you're all your losers are top tricks, so all your winners are top tricks, you've got a much better hand. So we finish in four spades. And the lead is the king of diamonds. So I need you to have a little think about that. And ideally to make a plan if possible. As you can imagine. Okay, so there was me visiting because I've got to put it on Q plus to show you the options. So I like uh, Alan there, nine top tricks. I like everybody to say, so important for me to, to have a starting point and knowing that I just need a finesse to make the contract. I feel I feel a lot better already, okay? However, we always look at losers as well. And we appear to have two diamond losers, a club losers, and a heart loser, possibly. Okay, quite often it will be. Remember, we expect North to be 5-5, five, five in the minus, okay, at least. So what you're trying to think to yourself is most of the time probably the finesse isn't going to work, okay? And then what you're going to do eventually is you're going to think, well, if I trust the opponents, and it's perfectly reasonable, don't get me wrong, they can bid like they want to, and they can bid, but if they've told you they're mostly 5-5, five, five, they're going to be 5-5, five, 95% five, of the time. So here, um, clearly, what I want you to do, and what's important, is to tell me what South has, because if we know what North's got, what's South got? Okay, and hopefully you've worked out the South is likely to be 2-2. Two, two. He might be worse, he might be shorter than that, but he'll only have two. Okay, so what that means is if, as a number of people have suggested, let's say we duck the first diamond and we win the, let's say we win the return, and then when we play the Ace King of Clubs and the Ace of Diamonds, South will have no more minors. Do notice when you duck a diamond, you're probably going to get a heart switch. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Okay, if you duck a diamond, a good north will now lead a heart. So you do need to bear that in mind. Okay, so let's say you've ducked the first diamond, north switches to a heart. Okay, but the key is we're thinking about it. And what's interesting, and <laughs> this is the hard bit. The, f the end play is not going to be leading up to your ace queen of hearts. It sort of looks like that would be wonderful. I have a feeling the end play is going to be leaving south on lead at some point. OK, so remember, it's a well and good thinking I'm going to win the second diamond. But I think that north, a good north, might switch to a heart at trick two. So you just need to bear that in mind. OK. And what my plan is, is to never let North get the lead. And it seems a bit odd, but I'm going to, let's say North does switch to a heart. I, I can take a finesse if you want. The only problem with that is, I guess it could be a singleton heart. OK, so be a bit careful. Tricky, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, I think ducking the lead is fine. If it turns out there's six, remember, they're not roughing your ace away. So someone worried they've got six diamonds, they're not going to have it very often. Um, but if they do, the next diamond will get roughed, but it hasn't taken a trick away from you. So you've still got reasonable chances there. OK, um, and you, you should probably be able to engineer an end play, um, even in that case. 
Okay, um, so you don't have to ice. So I think ducking is correct. What I'm going to do, um, can you see if you can, and this is what's so difficult, because what you've got to do is envisage the end of the game. And what I'm actually envisaging is that, assuming we draw trumps, yes, exactly, Louise, sorry, uh, ignore the word simple, and that was completely out of place, okay? Um, I think if the trumps break 4 nil. We haven't really got much chance here. Okay, so um, let's assume... I sorry, we have. We, we'll take a half an hour. But let's assume they break 3-1. Okay. Um, I say we haven't... Yeah, well, we have got a chance. But um, We draw them. That means North only has two hearts. So, I mean, this isn't easy, is it? But North told us he's 5-5. Five, five. Well, if he's got a trump as well, he's only got two hearts. So what I'm thinking is on the third round of hearts, South has to win it. Well, if South only has hearts left, what does he have to lead back? So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so let's look at the hand. I'm going to show you it on Q+. It's slightly easier for me to do that. I'm going to have to do the bidding if that's all right. So oh, they do something silly here, don't they? <laughs> I need to take control of them. Okay, bear with me. Let's restart. Okay, so it goes one spade, two no trumps, alerted by north, five five, three spades from from east, pass, and obviously south's not saying anything there. Okay, so we're in four spades. What I would say, it's the unusual two no trumps, somebody asking, the unusual two no trumps, this is called. So... I have to be honest, if North has a singleton heart, I think a lot of the time he would lead it. Okay, I think a lot of the time he would lead it here. So when it when the King of Diamonds is led, I think we are definitely right to, to duck that. Okay, we duck it. And North switches to a heart. That makes it tricky, doesn't it? Okay, it does make it a little bit tricky there. Um, so have a little think. I, I would feel that most of the time North had a singleton heart, he would probably have led it. But I certainly don't think he's leading the five from King Doubleton. So I think probably the safest way to play the hand is this. Okay, I'm going to win the ace of hearts. I'm going to draw the trumps. Oops, I've got to play from the North hand. I'm playing the wall, you see. So we're drawing the trumps. Let's just get rid of a few, let's say. I don't think it matters. Really. OK, so we've got to this situation and we feel that if we now play the Ace of Diamonds, the Ace and King of Clubs, South will only have hearts left. Is everybody happy with that? We've drawn the trumps and we knew that South only started with two and two at most. One diamond is already gone. So we are trusting the opponents, but of course, most of the time we do tell the truth when we're bidding. Perfectly reasonable to do it as well. And we're going to play the ace and king of clubs. Okay. And now I'm going to, believe it or not, let south win two heart tricks. That seems crazy, doesn't it? Okay. But at the moment, can you see, I've made seven tricks. So the only tricks I'm going to make from now on, it looks like, are two trumps. But imagine if I was able to make the seven of spades as well. Wouldn't that be lovely? And that is what's going to happen. So it's a bit crazy, isn't it? OK, but what we're going to do is we're going to play a heart. Well, it doesn't matter what we play here. We lose the king of hearts, but we're not going to rough the jack. We are not going to rough the jack, because if we rough the jack, we make the ten of spades and we just make the king of spades. What we're going to do here is discard because we know that South has to play another heart and now we can discard that and I do, as I say I do apologize for saying simple okay I do apologize for saying simple okay that completely it's something that sometimes you have stock phrases um, so that is amazing, isn't it? So what we've done there is we've eventually got a, 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 a rough and discount. So let's go back to that lot, the third. So at this point, South has got no choice 
and we end up getting a rough and discard, but it took a long time. Now, I'm going to go back, so just it's just easier rather than starting it. I'm going to go back to where we were. Okay, The King of Diamonds was led. Most of us had an easier plan, and I'm happy with that. A lot of Norths would have carried on with another diamond, so let's do that, and I think it's easier for us now. So now we win the ace and we feel safer. We didn't have to do these really clever things because what happens is we were able to draw the trumps. And as a lot of people had suggested, what we can do is we can play hearts and actually end play south in the heart suit. Okay. Someone asking why we can't rough the, the third trick, because we don't gain a trick by roughing. So John was asking why we can't rough that heart. Well, if we if we rough it, it's just two, one of the two tricks we're already making. But I'll show you that again in a moment. So what most of you had planned, perfectly reasonable. We are hoping it was another diamond lead. We thought, well, what we can do is play the ace and king of clubs. So we'll do that. And now we know that south is the only one left and if we can put south on lead he's going to give up so we're actually going to play a heart to the nine and that's what a number of you did okay so it goes a heart to the nine and you now end playing south to give you your, your two heart tricks can you see that so just again there we know that if we play the nine here south only has hearts and instead of getting a rough and discard on this occasion we are getting the heart lead the heart suit given to us there OK, we make the queen and the ace for a discard. OK, so we make the same in the end, the same 10 tricks there. OK, we make the ace of hearts in two. OK. And so unless North founds a switch, is it? I mean, the king of diamonds lead. I, I think it probably is a difficult switch to find, to be fair. Why did I go up with the ace and not take the finesse? Because we're a little bit worried that that could be a singleton. Now, I have to be honest, I think a lot of you would have led the singleton if you'd had a singleton. If you'd had one heart and two spades, rather than leading the king of diamonds, you might have led a singleton. But the ace of hearts was safety play. Otherwise, you'd play in a similar way. You'd play the finesse there, which would lose, but you can still get home, okay? Fortunately, it wasn't a singleton, so you win the ace of hearts, and we're going to play in a similar way. Now, I'll, I'll show you this again, because John did ask about why we didn't rough it, so we'll see it again. So we're going to play it in a particular way. Okay, we're going to play it slightly more carefully. So we play a spade to the ace, and a spade back to the queen. Okay. We do have to be in the east hand to lead the third round of diamonds. So before we draw the trumps, I think we have to risk now taking, and this is why playing the ace of hearts was better. We have to play the ace and the ace and king here, okay? Because we're getting ready for the end play, okay? So we draw the last round of trumps. Now the crucial thing here is to count your tricks. You have two more tricks, okay? You have two more tricks in your hand. OK, the king and ten of spades. You can't make the seven of spades if you play in a normal fashion. So let's just rough the heart. So if we rough the heart. Can you see? You've got eight tricks now, but you're just going to make the king of spades. If you lead a diamond or club, north takes two tricks. OK, so instead of that, we did a cunning play. We did a what's called a lose or lose. We did nine, ten. We discarded because we knew that South had to lead another heart. And of course, when he leads the other heart, the crucial element is you make the seven of spades as well. Whew. I can't believe I used the word simple there. What's simple backwards? Oh, elp, elp, elp miss. Elp miss, I think it's closer to than simple. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go back here. There you go. So there's the full hand. Um, I think, you know, yes, it is a very difficult hand, but the only way you can get close to playing it that way is surely if you happen to know, if you happen to know that North has five and five, you have to have a real map to play a contract like that. Most of us are just going to take a heart finesse. But if we're told there's 10 cards in the minors in the North hand, the heart finesse is suddenly not odds on, is it? 
Oh, sorry, it's suddenly not 50-50. You're expecting the hearts to divide, but probably six and two. In which case, there's six hearts, so there's six more chances to have the king in the south hand. And the finesse doesn't look so good. OK, let's try another one. Uh, let's hope it's a little easier. It is a little easier, but basically trying to map a player's hand isn't easier. It's never going to be easy. We saw one in, in the seminar, so those of you who watched that, where there was a four-heart opener. So on this occasion, we're going to see a three-heart one, and we'll see how we get on. So it's three hearts, a relatively normal double, I hope, from east. Pass from south. What do you fancy with the west hand there? And without four spades, well, clearly looking at the two hands as well, I think you've got to try three no trumps here. It's not perfect. And if your partner only has one heart, it could be very, very ugly. But when, you, when you've got the ace of hearts, as we're going to see, you've got an element of power. So let's see how it goes. You win three no trumps. The lead is the king of hearts. Seven top tricks. And it's over to you. I'll let you make a plan and I will uh, just get ready at the other place as it were. And hopefully, hopefully everybody will, 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 will get the first part of the plan, which of course is to duck a heart. So what we are hoping here is that if we duck the first lead, most of the time, it is possible, I suppose, that north, notice the vulnerability, north-south is vulnerable. It would seem very, very, very unusual that north would open, sorry, that, yeah, that north would open three hearts on just six, particularly if they play weak twos, for example. So I would feel you're, by ducking a heart, okay, you are, most of the time, you are going to be, um, most of the time, you are going to be cutting north off from south. And at that point, you're starting to feel a little bit excited. And what do I mean by that? Well, if the diamonds break three and two, OK, you've got an extra trick there. OK. Beyond that, if south is on lead, is south going to enjoy being on lead? And what I said is no. Okay. Now, what we're going to find here on this hand is we're going to end up end playing south twice. Okay, that's the kind of thing we really enjoy. Okay. All right. Now, if diamonds breaks three and two, who has the three diamonds? Now, I don't want you telling me who is most likely to have three diamonds. I want you to tell me who has three diamonds. So remember, I don't want you to tell me the probabilities. I want you to tell me who has three diamonds. And nobody's got it right yet. Nobody's still got it right. Yes, we've got the don't know. So, I, Lord, you're quite right to guess north when everybody else has guessed south. But the answer is you don't know. It's most likely to be south, but you don't know. It's the same as a club finesse. The club finesse is likely to work, but you don't know it's going to work. Spade finesse might fail. So we do not know who's got three diamonds. And someone used the term avoidance play. What we're going to try and do is avoid North getting the lead. And I would have thought the most cunning play is to lead a diamond to the nine. Remember, you have to lose one diamond. So we're going to make sure we lose it to south. OK, does that make sense? So I'm going to win the second heart. Then I'm going to play a diamond to the nine. Unfortunately, I'm going to discover that south has four diamonds but that's by the by I want to make a plan 
to avoid North getting the lead. Okay, does that make sense? So let's see the hand and see how it's going to pan out. Okay, so I'm going to take you to Q plus here. I, I want to show you the hand as it were. So North <laughs> leads the King of Hearts and there's no surprise. I hope everybody's happy. And he, he, I suppose he could find a switch here, but he's got the Queen of Clubs. So I think most people are going to carry on with the Queen of Hearts. Okay, <clears throat> switch might be healthy. Okay, to the ace. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to play a diamond and I'm hoping that North can't play a high one. So if North plays the jack, I would just win it because I cannot afford North to get the lead. Remember, if North gets the lead, he's got five winners. OK, so I'm going to put the nine in there okay. and South wins. Unfortunately, South is not end played here because South, of course, can play a diamond back. OK, can you see that? Nicely played. However, can you see now you've got the first exit card? Now, what, would, what do we mean by an exit card? An exit card is a card that you give the opponents the lead with. And of course, the card you want to give your opponents the lead with here is their fourth winning diamond. OK, we know we're going to have to lead that, you know, uh, lose that. So let's lose it because we know North South is not going to enjoy being on lead. Now, you might think a club lead is OK, but remember, you've got the nine and the jack. Very subtle, this, isn't it? Can you see the difference the nine makes? It, it's wonderful, isn't it, having a nine like that? Take the nine away and put it in the north hand. South isn't end played. But let's have a look what happens. So the, you play the king of diamonds. And you play another diamond there. So south is on lead. What does south do? Now south can see... I've got to remember which hand... South can see ace, nine and queen, ace, jack. And to be honest, south can guess that a spade is probably going to give a lead away. But I think I think a lot of Souths probably would lead a club here, which is, as you can see, a complete and utter disaster. Um, <clears throat> because it does give Declarer four club tricks. OK, it does actually give Declarer four club tricks. So double dummy, probably South's best play. So just to show you that, it goes club, small. What does North do? Well, North is probably hoping his partner's got Jack-10 or King or something like that. OK, remember, you can't see the West Ham. And of course, if it goes to the Queen there, the Ace wins. And we've got the King, Jack and the Three of Clubs there. OK, and we'll, at the end, and we'll end up losing the Queen of Spades at the end. OK. If, if you choose to leave the Ten of Spades, that's OK. We've end, we gain a trick, don't we? And the beauty comes right at the end, doesn't it? Because it goes 10 of spades. We win the jack. And now we hope our spades are winners. So we play a small spade to the king. A small spade to the ace. Oh dear, the spades haven't broken. But of course now we can end play south for a second time. So we play small spade to the queen. OK. OK. At this point, what does South do? Well, as we've seen, he plays, he might as well play the six. It goes small, queen and ace. And of course, we got the last two. OK, so we've made nine tricks. To be fair, with Southford led clubs, he only gets end played once. <laughs> Whereas if he leads spades, he gets end played twice. So I think you probably... Again, I'm not... Remember, a number of you said play ace, king of diamonds and then another diamond. That will work on this hand. OK, so if you play ace, king of... Remember, you've got to duck the first heart and win the ace. Playing ace, king of diamonds and another one will work. And most of the time it will, because most of the time South will have longer diamonds. We were just being extra careful. OK. Um, so what we're using is the bidding of our opponents, and it is really important, OK? It is really important, OK? Because their bidding really hurts us. OK, their bidding really hurts us, OK? 
Uh, I don't think there's any surround plays quite on this. It's a similar situation, but there's not quite a room for a surround play here uh, because they've, I've, I've, I've set the hands so that the opponents have 10, 8, 7, 6, 5. They're quite solid in the other respects. Most of the time, who knows? I had a nice hand sent in by someone recently um, and it was a lovely end play, but it turned out they didn't need it. And of course, a lot of the time that will be the case. OK, a lot of the time that will be the case. Um, someone asking how far four hearts goes off. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. They are vulnerable though, don't forget. So losing losing your your your, your six tricks is already um, is already uh, too many points. Okay, maybe you're asking about four spades, but I don't think that would be fun either. Okay, I think that's enough on that. Let's just quickly go back to the PowerPoint there. Uh, and finish off so that those of you who prefer to see the full hand there it, there as I say the d diamonds might have broken evenly so you would only need hopefully um, one end play okay but what I what I want you to do is every time the opponents are annoying try to use it to your advantage and it and it happens more often the more you play in competitive bidding and you get these annoying unusual tuna trumps or Michael's cubids or guest M bids particularly guest M where they precise about the suits they can be really handy on being able to play now you may get lost and you may get confused don't don't worry Every so often that will happen, but at least it really does give you some extraordinary... I think it's worth playing the bits because most people don't take advantage of them. That's why we preempt, because most people struggle to bid over them and don't take advantage of them when it comes to it. So don't forget, it's all well and good saying, oh, we shouldn't bid too much because they know it. Most opponents won't do it. Someone asking about how many points you need for a takeout double of a preempt. An opening hand with a singleton heart is, is okay. But if you haven't got that singleton, you would look be looking to be more like 14 or 15 points or more. On this occasion, it was 16 in the East Hand. But the singleton's quite valuable because it, it, it means you've got a lot more playing strength if you end up in a suit contract. OK, so um, we had our hand evaluation. So let's go back to that. Um, I've got to remember where that was, though. There we go. So... Let's go to it. And I'm hoping we're just looking at the south hand there. My view of that hand is I have jack 10, 9 and ace 10 to 5. So even if it's just a five card suit, it's something. There's not many detrimental values. OK, jack 10, 9 are a triple turn, but they're likely to be worth more than jack. Uh, so I would feel the hand even if you don't want to call it. And we have got a tip coming, yes. Uh, there will be a tip coming. Um, I would feel the hand is worth more than 12 points. If it was Jack-10 Doubleton, I'll probably throw those away. I'm not opening the bidding, though. What we're going to see is the topic that we're dealing with on Friday. It's whether we want to make. So let's have an, the auction. It goes a heart. East uh, chooses not to bid, which I think I like. OK, it goes two diamonds. And then just two hearts from the south, OK? Not from south, from north, OK? So the bidding started one heart, two diamonds from you, two hearts from north, and you've got to decide what to do with your hand, OK? And the question is, do you want to go for game or not? Because if you want to go for game, we can use a, a bid that we discussed on Friday which is basically a new suit at the three level. So if you're going for game, you can bid a new suit at the three level here. Um, and and that's what I would do. Okay, it's, it's a natural bid. Partner takes it as a natural bid. But what I'm doing is, in many ways, what I'm suggesting is, partner, I've got a strong hand. Okay, I've got a strong hand. To be honest, if you've got a spade stopper, why don't we try three no trumps? Sort of really what three clubs is saying. Remember, I can't bid two clubs because my partner, my partner's rebid two hearts here. So it's got a heart, two diamonds, two hearts, and I'm going to bid three clubs, and then it goes three no trumps. Okay, it's not necessarily a perfect auction, and three no trumps won't always make. Okay, but it, I, it looks to me like a reasonable contract. Um, you're going to end up making actually a couple of spades here. 
uh, and you're going to need to somehow uh, make another trick as it happens. The hearts break 3-3, three, three, so it's easy enough. Um, you need a 3-3 a three, three break in hearts or a 3-3 three, three break in clubs. Don't forget, it's one of two 3-3 three, three breaks here. Okay, so it's lucky in hearts, but it's not unreasonable to hope that clubs might break if hearts don't break. Um, there's also chances that you might be able to make an extra heart if hearts break 4-2 here. Okay, so, you know... Um, but, you know, things could have gone wrong in other ways. It's not a perfect contract, but I would feel that I, you know, if it's one of two, three, three breaks, it's a, it's reasonable. You know, it's, it's a reasonable contract. OK, and I think you've got some other chances in there as well. So the key is when you've got 12 points, it's a, it, one of those key hands for evaluation. Nine, ten points are similar. 11, 12, nine, ten hands, 16 15, 16 hands as well. There's a lot of hands where you need to decide because one valuation isn't good enough for me. Notice there are two aces in the south hand as well. So for me, I'm, I, I would feel I'm closer to 13 than 12. Certainly closer to 13 than 11. So I would go for it. Um, and as I say, I mean, just trying to see if they can find... Uh, they can't... Yeah, I mean, they might be at a, I mean, a double dummy, they might be able to lead diamonds and cause us a little bit more trouble. Uh, although I think we can maybe break their communications. OK, so I would bid three clubs. To, the problem with two no trumps is for me, I think I'm worth a game bid and I haven't got a spade stopper. So obviously it turns out OK here, but you'd finish in two no trumps. And I think, you know, if you've got the spade stopper, you probably want to be in three no trumps. OK. All right, uh, we've still got uh, our tip of the day. Uh, don't forget, uh, I've got our winner. First of all, let's do our winner. Andrea O'Rafferty. Andrea O'Rafferty. Okay. Someone asking it over two no trumps, would partner raise? Well, I think with just 12 points and not a fit in hearts, I think you've got a, a flat hand. You know, you've got a 5-3-3-2 three, three, hand, which is the weakest you can be. You've got a small doubleton and partner's hand. I think you, you're pretty much weak. So, Andrea Rafting, we've got four cards, and I'll tell you, uh, there's a reason for that, because one of the winner last time um, has, is going to be a September winner. So, um, I'm back out to four. Okay, I'm going to choose a card. Let's see what it is. It is the Four of Hearts. That means it's east west at my table. No, at my opponent's table, which means you're my teammates, Andrew, but you'll be playing with the partner of your choice. Okay. So five four three one. Thank you, Brian. But uh, I didn't think there was any redeeming features to the hand. I can quickly slip it up there again. Okay, there. Uh, for me, a singleton in partner suit. No, no tens, nines, or eights, and obviously no fit in hearts. So for me, I'd be thinking, I'm as weak as I can be. If partner can't bid game, I shouldn't be bidding it. Okay. OK, um, let's go to the PowerPoint and have a little look. So well done, Angela. Tip of the day, I'm going to focus on beginners uh, and we're going to be looking towards beginners novices tips from now on. Very much so. Um, and very simple tip is that I think in the next year or two, we need to get more people playing bridge, hopefully some youngsters as well, but of all ages. So I want you to try to help beginners. I want you to understand that almost all beginners need encouragement. And there'll be many of us playing now that if we weren't given the encouragement at the right time, may never have ended up playing. OK, whereas most people, if they're given enough encouragement and what encouragement means, it doesn't mean necessarily advice. It just means well done uh, when you know they could have made an extra trick. OK, but they've made the contract because remember, as beginners, our main aim is to make the contract. As we move on, if we're becoming a novice, then if you asked for advice, of course, give it. OK, so they're saying, I felt I could have made an extra trick there. Well, then, of course, yeah, no, well, I think you, you, maybe you could have made an extra trick. I thought you played pretty well, you know, you're, you know, but yeah, maybe you could have done, you know, and that kind of thing. And then you tell them how to end play the opponent twice. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> OK, but we're going to try and look at some of the aspects of Begin Bridge um, and novices particularly, and we're going to try to, to really push people on. Uh, we've got a few novices definitely on the site and I'd like to p create more space for them. Uh, not that I'm going to change anything for us players or whatever other than the tip of the day. Um, what we're going to do is is try to 
guide people uh, through the Begin Bridge software, which is which. Don't get me wrong; you can play it as well if you're if you're if you're a seasoned player. You can play the last few chapters. They'll they're practice on easy defence, as it were. Okay, so you can see. But hopefully, we can uh, bring a few beginners on and uh, and you know, and I think hopefully encourage them to play live as well, because I think it would be lovely. Okay, um, so I'm hoping we're going to have a good week. Don't forget, on Wednesday, it's pairs, uh, but it'll be the same. You just log on in the same way. If you want to join us, of course, as a non-member, you can buy it as well. Don't forget, don't forget that. Um, and um, the offer of the week, I think, is one of my seminars at half price. So look for that as well. Um, I think it's on competitive bidding. So if you're up for that, uh, those non-members, you can get that at half price to entertain you as well. And of course, you get the set hands with it. OK, we've got to have a quiz, don't we? So let's leave you with that. We've had some nasty quizzes. So see if you can do that. OK, so it's got a heart from you. It's four clubs from your partner. And you have agreed to play splinter bids. So a heart from you, four clubs from your partner, and you have agreed to pay splinter bridge. Sorry, splinter bids. And what that means is a four club bid shows a singleton or void in the clubs. It promises four cards or more heart support. OK, and it um, four cards or more heart support. And it shows the values to be able to make game. OK, we'll give Brian the benefit of the doubt there, uh, but we have all done it. We've all passed a splinter bid, but I don't think he really meant that. OK, <laughs> I right, will enjoy your week. We'll enjoy your week. I hopefully see some of your Wednesday. Remember, on Friday, we're talking about strictly game forcing bids and how that allows us to bid. Hope you had some fun and see you again soon. <laughs>